That's it. You got your treat. You want me to show this? You want me to show this? I'll show it. So, uh, what, what, what are we doing? I would still like a treat. Sure, no problem. No, I was talking to my dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh. I mean, he does that. He does have molasses cookies, oh. but uh, they they don't taste like your typical molasses cookies. You can't give sugar to a dog. Yeah. So we're just hanging out here on the C three podcast, just uh, to try to, I guess, get an update. Because you're you're the man that uh, I consider a close connection with uh, Hedera. So when I'm when I want to talk Hedera or bring Hedera to the to the uh, cryptonauts. I think it's it's fair to reach out to you because you're you have a deeper insight of what's going on with Hedera. So it's nice just to uh, touch base with you and just to bring up uh, bring forward any new things that's been going on with um, with Hedera. And the nice thing about the way things are recorded right now is that we not only have the opportunity for the listeners to see the uh, sorry they have not only to listen but they can also see the podcast going to the YouTube channel. So that's cool. So you can share that as well. Um, and obviously we're still looking for uh, more subscribers on the YouTube channel so we can port over to the Odyssey ch- uh, Odyssey platform pretty soon because that all obviously makes sense, right? We want to try to be as decentralized as possible and not be stuck in YouTube forever. So Odyssey is the next goal and we need 300 subs with the new uh, C3 Media channel. So we're getting there little by little. Every single uh, time we upload a new video, there's always a new sub. And that's awesome. So that's that's where we're at right now. So, anyways, we have um, Max. How are you, Max? Obviously, we we, we, we talk on and <laughs> off uh, here and there. Uh, by the way, yeah. we, we are recording, and so uh, this is going to be a really mellow, uh, kickback, nice little conversation. No no stress. No need to uh, over exaggerate, over elaborate your feelings on Hedera. We all know that you like Hedera. Um, Hedera is awesome, by the way. I like it. Um, another thing that you can do, uh, Max, if you have some awesome links that you want to share, you can actually screen share. And uh, while you're screen sharing, I can see what you're screen sharing. And then the viewers can also see what you're screen sharing. So it's a good experience for all the viewers and listeners if you're trying to explain it. It's a good way to uh, communicate that stuff. So with that said, Max, actually, uh, really quick in a nutshell for the new viewers and listeners, can you just give a quick little insight of your uh your experience in history with crypto and Hedera. Sure. Um, so for some context, I uh, found out about Bitcoin in, uh, well, let me see, 2015? Yeah, about 2015, but it never really interested me. The uh, <laughs> That would be a controversial uh, opinion with your audience, but it's just giving you some background where I came from. So it, it never really interested me, the uh, excessive uh, amount of energy uh, being used for crypto. So it, it was a it was nice thing. I kept track for it. Then back in 2017, I would say uh, summer 2017, uh, I did the, you know, mining with your GPU. I'm sure tons of people can relate to this one. And uh, once uh, once I've done that, I was shopping around because you, the profit you're making from mining, you you go on exchanges, you're you're trading that crypto to other crypto or potential projects. I'm sure other people did that in 2017, but I, I never felt like any of the projects really piqued my interest, and it wasn't about uh, profit uh, profit about uh, oh. It wasn't about the profits or the return on investment. It had to do more with uh, the technology. I just didn't fully believe in technology. A lot of interesting stuff out there. And unfortunately, there was also a lot of crypto scam at the time. Um, but yeah, I never ended up wasting or investing too much money there. And then eventually in uh, November 2017, I stumbled upon something called Hashgraph. Uh, Edera was not even an existing project at the time. Uh, there is a public version of the um, Ashgraph algorithm. So uh, back in, in the November 2017, I saw this video that is called The Simple Explanation of Hashgraph. Um, I sat down, watched it one hour uninterrupted, and I don't know what happened, but it, something just clicked. The video made sense to me. I'm not a, I'm not a scientist, but the way that Dr. Lehman Baird explained it, and the way that it was working, it, it just plainly made sense. So I knew I wanted to get on board, but there was no option to invest. And then uh, in March 2018, 
Edera came out. Uh, they made this huge announcement. They they officially called out Edera Ashcraft. They explained their four model, uh, their four angle for their model, which is governance, uh, stability. They by heart. I, I don't remember off uh, offhand here, but uh, they're on their website. Someone's curious. Uh, literally on their front page, they're mentioned. Anyway, um, so I still wanted to invest it, but because they wanted to abide by regulations. I had to wait. Um, I'm not a SAF investor, or I don't have. Uh, I'm not a credit investor. I couldn't invest in the SAF, uh, that required like uh, take us an annual salary of two hundred fifty thousand and a million dollar in capital. Yeah. They don't consider your your assets. They you have to have capital of a million dollars at least. So that out of the picture, I was like, fine. I'll wait until it's publicly traded. And I waited and I waited. I, I waited almost a full year. This is how much I believe in the technology from the moment I saw it and, and before I could even invest into it. Um, so it, that very first video sold me. They, they didn't have to give me a public speech or uh, any uh, salesman approaching me or some YouTube fan online. No, no. I saw the video. I was like, yeah, this technology is gold. I'm going to follow it to the end. And then I started investing that in, uh, I think it was October 2018, I'm trying to remember when it was starting to publicly trade. No, actually, it was even past that. It took a while. It took a while. So I stayed patient, and I didn't invest in anything else. I was just waiting for that project. Awesome. By the way, uh, Max, I've, I've spoken to you many times, uh, but I don't think I've ever officially had you on the podcast, have I? Um, not that I recall. Yeah. We, we had this... Uh, <laughs> this group chat where we're talking about different technology, not just crypto. And that went on, well, that went on for like, I think two hours in the yeah, uh, wee yeah. morning. So for the listeners out there, that's what I like about C3 media and just crypto in general is that you get to meet really, really cool people uh, here like Max. And that's, I mean, we, we click we, we, when you got somebody out there that just knows the things that you know, and obviously want to, I guess, help shape the future. And I think that's what you're doing, Max. I mean, you say you're you're not really a developer per se, but you believe you believe in in, in Hedera, and you're obviously going to continue to hodl your bag, um, your your billion dollar bag, right? <laughs> yeah. I wish. No, I, I I'm never going to turn uh, into a millionaire when I retire. And let let's be real, the term millionaire is is loosely used uh, nowadays because. Um, Take, take your salary, multiply by the number of years that you'll be working till the end of your life. You're easily accumulating about a million or two millions. And, but that's your just your salary. 20 years ago, a million was, was a lot. But you can't retire with a million bucks a day. So right. by that definition, I'll be comfortable when I retire. But I will not you, be a millionaire when I retire. You know what's interesting is that the homes out here in Silicon Valley, on average, are about $1.2 million. Right, right, and I could afford that. Uh, uh, that's how I see it. I could easily afford that when I retire, but it's, I, I don't see that as the, uh, well, I grew up from the 80s, so a million dollars then was a, worth a lot more than it is today. Uh, if anyone's curious, there's a website that shows you inflation, how much things changed since then. Um, so, so, yeah, a million dollars is is not as much as people think. Uh, so when they say I'll be a millionaire, they, they may want to change that terminology at some point. I'm a. I guess they can start saying that they're a dogenaire. Do <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that crazy, man? Have you been looking? I, I I don't know, man. That's just that blows my mind. Dogecoin, just up there in the t ten, uh, top ten spot, and just continuously just keeps holding that position, man. It's insane. Uh, something that doesn't have a cap, that is a meme coin, staying in the top ten, that doesn't really have a true use case. Something like. Um, if you put it in comparison to Hedera, there is n like no comparison. You know what Hedera can do, and then you look at Doge. Like, why is Doge in the top ten? You know, it's ah oh, man, I don't get it. I don't get it, man. Eventually, I'm uh, I'm gonna say something. Uh, well, the Dodge Dodge Coin, the their fame is based on meme. There, there's nothing more popular than memes, and if you know the right person to push that meme, you, you just take someone famous, uh, Elon, Elon Musk. Elon um, Musk. So, <laughs> <laughs> you, you just take someone famous, and yeah. uh, they they manage to push it to whole new heights. It, it doesn't take much. A tweet uh, nowadays, it's it's that's how crazy the market moves. Um, for me, I. 
I, I don't even care if it's not as profitable for me. It's always about the technology I'm invested exactly. in. Is it really is it really solving problems? And I've had that conversation before with other people where uh, people looking for short term games, and I tell them, well, if you're looking for short term game, don't don't look into Adara. And this is coming from a guy who's a big fan of Adara, and I'm saying to these people, if you're looking for short term game. Don't look in Hedera, don't look in HBAR. If you're in it for the long term, then you won't be disappointed. But if you're in it for the short term, what you want to do is uh, focus on those coins that are being hyped or potential projects that may be scams. Because a lot of people, uh, it's sad to say this, but a lot of people made a lot of money with projects that started as scams. Uh, for example, BitConnect. Is there are people that made money and get, yeah. got out of it before uh, the scam got exposed. Yeah. So th those are the... The market that is the more profitable in the short term but again you're, you're looking at a gamble factor there and that's why i kind of stay away and, from those and that's why i say the same thing with with doge that's it's a gamble it's not really a use case other than being a meme i guess meme is the use case people love entertainment and it's just funny to i guess buy dogecoin and just i don't get it but there's no there's no real use case that's why i i and this is official i i don't own a doge bag um none zero not even a fraction of Doge. Everything that I've been buying recently has been um, pretty much publicly. I'm going to say that I've been buying a lot of Hedera. That's what I've been buying. Um, yeah, and I'm proud of that because I believe in what Hedera is uh, bringing forward to the table. And this is just the beginning. I know you got in like pretty much at the beginning. I'm barely getting in, and I'm still accumulating um, here at, at at the current rate. But regardless of what the current rate is, I'm looking at at the overall picture. It is a amazing piece of technology and obviously as more and more it, it, more and more projects and software and uh, easy utilization of using Hedera and services um, while I have my bag that's going to be pretty cool to you know utilize that technology in the future right now from my experience as a person that's not really um, uh, neck deep into Hedera and, and, uh, and utilizing services it's very difficult to just find um, simple integrate, integrated services out there on Hedera. It looks like things are still at the early stages and things are still being developed. But the awesome thing about Hedera is that um, it you can pretty much integrate or bridge over any sort of language, coding language, any sort of algorithm into uh, Hedera and create your, your product slash services off of Hedera. Um, and the awesome thing about that is that Hedera's fees are so extremely affordable that you can put push like a, th a million transactions and it's still going to cost you like less than a dollar or something like that. Something insane like that, right? It's crazy. It, it, yeah. Yeah. The, um, what I was, um, what I will point out towards the uh, fees and then that's, that's something that's important to keep in mind. The, fees my, needs to be, um, my, needs you... to be affordable. Can you screen oh, share? Hello? Can you, yeah, Mike, can you screen share just uh, the fees regarding um, oh. Adara? Oh, let's see here. I'm yeah, just, for the, just for the viewers, because right now all we have is just our little icons here talking back and forth. Okay, uh, let me see if I can bring that up here. I wasn't on the page. <laughs> um, there we go. Okay, I'll just bring this up. I never had to do a share on the uh, Discord one. I think I have it here. It's just the yeah screen. There we go. Uh, I think that would work. Okay. Okay. You, you see something there? Yeah. Watch stream. What do we got here? And awesome. Got it. Beautiful. Yeah. So on the uh, I, I hide my other tab because they're not related to crypto in general. Um, so this one's kind of nice. Uh, it gives you a sneak peek, right? It's, it just says one, uh, one, one hundred of a penny for a transaction, but it doesn't give you the whole picture because you're not using the network just for transferring crypto. Uh, if someone was, and no one looks at the top, <laughs> uh, if someone was going to get, uh, let's see here. If you look for fee on this site, uh, hopefully it brings me to that location. Uh, I guess I'll have to do a Google search because I eh, there are fees. So if I do a Google search for there are fees, you know what you can do is just uh, pop up a singular uh, window pane, so you don't have to show all the other uh, uh, tabs if you want. 
Oh, it's it's good. It's 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 not uh, rated A team uh, content. <laughs> oh, okay. It's not uh, like I, it's not like you can read it anyways. They're all smashed together. Yeah, yeah I, I like a lot of tabs. <laughs> uh, so, on Adara, if you if you're googling Adara Hashgraph fees, it's a good chance the first link suggested bring you to this page. Now, this page uh, doesn't seem like there's a lot of uh, options, right? You see six options here, and and I think that would come out still nice on the. Uh, uh, on the screen that you're looking at. Uh, but if you take one, for example, like let's say cryptocurrency services, then these are all the API calls you can do with cryptocurrency. And consensus service, or the API call, token service, all the API calls. And when you click one, uh, this is especially important for developers. Um, let's say they have a token service and they want a token burn, the uh, token they created. They click this. They say how many people are paying for the signature, number of total signatures, and if there is a memo attached to it. And then it gives you the price. The price will always be in USD, and I, I doubt that would change much. Uh, here, uh, they auto adjust it uh, on how much it would cost in HBAR. And here's the thing that's good that, um, as far as I know, no other network is doing. It's not the reason I, I like it there, but I love it there even more that they're doing this, is that regardless when in time, a developer wants to build on Adara, they'll always be paying that uh, one-tenth of a penny in this case. So they're paying one-tenth of a penny, but the good news is that if you, they bought their load of uh, HBARs when the price was low, and they still have HBAR when the price goes up, their cost over time actually goes down. So if they bought, uh, let's say, at one cent, uh, they bought it at one cent and was it today H bar? Uh, yeah, let's assume the cost uh, for using H bars when it was one cent that would have been 0.1 H bar based on on the math that's there, and they still had H bar left. So that would mean that they could do, uh, yeah, according to the math here, they could do 31 more API calls than they could for the same price. So it it, it just ended up costing them 31 times less. Wow. So the price goes up. They, and they still have supply from their original price they bought it in. They they actually making discount API calls from their perspective. If the price is lower than they what they bought it in, it's not a problem. They just have to buy in at the lower price, and they use those H bars, and they use the the, the supply at that, that lower cost. That's pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's why developers should uh, should stock up whenever the price is down. That's also why uh, the support line on Adara, and that's uh, no one's really talking about this, but they should. That's why the support line on Adara is so strong. If you compare it to USD, because they are charging in USD here, um, you'll notice that it has strong support line. Whenever it's uh, consolidate, it doesn't break that support line. It just waits until it can go up again. When it consolidates again, it doesn't break the support line. Then it goes up again. It and has like, to do. Uh, it looks like we're not able to see anything. It's all fuzzy. Sorry. Uh, I'm not able to see your screen anymore. We have a fuzzy screen going on here. Oh, that's it's all, it's strange. All pixelated. Is it back? No. You know, I can send you the link because uh, if you're recording, that would. Um, that would like look nice on your screen. I uh, no, it's fine. It just um, not sure what's going on here. Let me try to uh, restream that. Uh, yeah, if I reduce the FPS, oh, that's going to reduce the uh, the bandwidth. Yeah, but for some reason, it, it's a still image, so we don't need FPS. So I reduced it. So uh, yeah, so so if um, if they want to make something on Adara, if they want to use, uh, the, I think the biggest company right now uh, that's using transaction volume on Adara is Asdax. Uh, someone may have heard about it, uh, and they're responsible for more than fifty percent of the transaction at this moment. It's it's going to be temporary though. Uh, with time, Asdax uh, will do far more. Uh, right now, their screen is just loading here. So. Yeah, it's probably because I'm streaming with Discord. It's not liking the setup. I has a advertising platform and marketplace to create, buy, verify, and sell advertising. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and they've been at this for a while. They uh, they were trying to do this on Ethereum, but Ethereum was just crazy expensive. Yeah. They it didn't take them very long to to get off the Ethereum platform and use Ethereum. Um, th the reason why Ethereum's model also makes sense is that you need to charge just enough to cover your expense. 
So the network does use electricity. It is, these networks, they, uh, the, these nodes, they, they cost electricity to be used. So you need to compensate those nodes uh, for the equivalent value or maybe a 10, 20% markup. I, I don't know what their markup calculation is, but I'm sure there is one. Um, if you offer the uh, transactions for free, then you end up with hidden fees. And when I say hidden fees, it's not, it's not necessarily the blockchain that's giving you hidden fees. It, it means somewhere, somehow, those fees are covered. Either it's in the investors. they um, Whenever they invest, there's a part of it that goes into covering the electricity costs of those nodes. Like, uh, let's say, for example, Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, people get rewarded with Bitcoins. But those Bitcoins came from investor money. And there's nothing on the network that is charging in dollars for the amount of transaction and electricity costs. Like if you calculate the number of uh, terawatts, I think there are terawatts right now, uh, and you convert that into electricity, you divide that per transaction, you'll notice that the cost uh, in USD is much higher than what uh, people are being charged for a Bitcoin transaction. So that means to cover the difference, uh, that's coming directly from investor, which as long as hype continues, then investor can continue to make money. But the moment a hype reaches a certain cap, then that's where you you start seeing uh, seeing some reduced uh, returns on your investment. But the DARA is is making sure that everything that happens on the network is covered somehow. So you can't have a fee-less network because you you end up with hidden fees, and you can't have a very expensive network because no one's going to want to use it. And then you you get that uh, papa mama bear situation, then baby bear is just a right mid, right in the middle of that. <laughs> so what's going on here is with the ad events, crypto payments, and daily average transactions, they're still loading. Yeah, I know. I, I bet you if I do it on my phone, it would load just fine. It must be something to do with the Discord stream because that loads every time I go to that page. Um, let's see if maybe it's the... Let's give it a shot. Uh, I'll do uh, stacks again. Actually, I'll do that in incognito. Maybe that's... Uh, incognito. Uh, yeah, let's do incognito. Of course, it says I never clicked the link. Um, yeah, that's weird. Uh, must must something to do with the stream. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it on my phone. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to share my phone from here. Stacks. If I click as X on my phone, oh wow, that that is the poorest timing I could possibly. That's the first time I see the website not showing the uh, the loading here uh, on that screen. So they must be, uh, yeah, they must be doing a change to their site. Okay. Okay. Can you, can you go back to the site and just? So it, it does. Yeah, I tried refreshing it, uh, force refresh, uh, maybe clearing the cache, but uh, it, it doesn't refresh. This is the first time. <laughs> this is the first time I see the website not loading up the three session. Uh, it would normally say here the daily average transaction, well, which was around. I don't, three, I don't three see. Four. I don't see what you're talking about. I see a, a search the web. Oh, oh, oh! I uh, okay. I think it's streaming the. Uh, give me a second. Yeah, I see. But it, it was. There we go. Sorry. Can you see it now? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah, it, uh, this card was attached to the uh, uh, the browser window, not the uh, not the uh, monitor. So that's why when I went to the other one, you didn't see it. But um, yeah, it's, so normally here, you, what you would see is around three to four million transaction a day, um, just on the network crypto payments. Uh, th these ones were a little bit higher because with each transaction, they including. Um, details within those transactions uh, as well for ad events uh, I don't have a screenshot of this I didn't save anything on file uh, if there is a place on the web that has it um, has it archived like internet archive maybe they have something there but um, where you need to go if you really need to know what's happening on on the Dara uh, so it would be dragon glass yeah. and Adara. you've seen the website before right oh yeah oh yeah yeah so I love this website. They they have three other sites, um, completely different design, but this this is my favorite by far because it tells you the number of transactions that they've done on Adara. And if I go over um, a year's worth of transaction, uh, you can clearly see that uh, back in May last year, 
they did 37 million transaction and in april uh, 140 million transaction there was a little bit of hype uh, around february uh february and march because they were doing a hackathon in january it had uh, something to do with token service uh, so that ramped up the uh the volume but as you can see uh the hype of the hackathon you can see it reflected here and here once the hackathon was over it just continued on its normal stream so from uh, january it was 115 million transaction and then April 140 million. It looks like they're on their way to to do 200 million transactions soon uh, yeah, per month. That's crazy. And, and we and this is yeah, this is not the speed of the network. This is actual use cases. They they actually have a, a test net. See on, on top of the page it says mainnet. Public test net is a different one. And I don't even know if they um, they report anything there. Yeah, there we go. And, and this is the other network that they use to do testing with. And just on that network, for testing purposes, they have 1.5 million transaction in the last 24 we hours. Are fuzzy again, oh, we're kind of depicts. Uh, yeah, it's it's got to be something with the stream. Yeah, uh, maybe. That's. Uh, we we should probably use something else in Discord to stream next time. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Uh, let's see if I there can play go, around with it. Got it, and got it, got it, got it. it. It's it's back. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's weird that it's going in like this. Um, anyway, so these are the transactions that are not real. So if you go up uh, up there, it's public testnet. These are the transactions that doesn't count for anything. People use that to, to do testing on and off. I mean, you can see the uh, if there are tokens, the weird names that they gave to it. Uh, it's it's clear that they're they're doing some kind of testing. Uh, Three point six billion tokens here. Um, they're messing around with the uh, with the network to see how reliable it is, uh, but it's great. It's built the same way as the main net. The only difference is that on the test net, uh, they do a wipe. Uh, eventually, they, they purge the, the database uh, from certain information. So a person can't build their business on the test net. It's only intended there to help them to see what they can do. And as far as I know, uh, I don't believe anyone is being charged to use a test net and it is practical right now to use it. Uh, in fact, it's so popular that they had to include another uh, network, which is called the Preview Net. And because the um, because the te test net was getting so many updates, developer wanted something a little bit more stable. Now, what they're doing is they're making a lot of updates on the Preview Net. Once they have a, a version they're happy with, they push it to the test net, and then they they on the test net they they continue to push it. And once they're satisfied with that, they push the uh, version to the mainnet. Yeah, that's cool. That's pretty cool, man. That's real good. Uh, you, you you messaged me something in regards to a crossover with Hedera. Can you explain what that's about? Oh yeah, I definitely have those ones open. Uh, okay, so this is Etherscan. If you know Ethereum, you definitely know this site. Um, at the very top uh, here, so they have transaction. You click that link. And uh, I don't believe this auto refreshes, so you, you may have to refresh it if you had it open. It shows today 1.1 billion. I can make that bigger. 1.1 billion transactions. So 1 billion 112 million transactions since the beginning of Ethereum. 2015, right? Um, I, I think 2013. I, I don't know the ex, uh, the exact uh, year of Ethereum, but it's, it's been what easily five or six years. Mm -hmm. um, for Dragon Glass, I had Dragon Glass open more than once here. Let me close that. There you go. So for the Dragon Glass, you can see the number of transactions since their network started, and uh, Ethereum had the, what a five-year lead start on the, <laughs> on the number of transactions. Um, they're about that. Th this is what I call the crossover, and, and for me, um, it's for me, it's a big deal because it shows market recognition. People, developers are are seeing the potential of Edera above Ethereum. The moment this number of transaction crosses and exceeds the number of Ethereum transaction here, which is that gonna that ha that's going to happen like tomorrow or some, some sometime within the next couple of days, isn't it? Yeah, uh, about five days. Yes, we're getting getting very very close. I mean, it's great that they crossed the one billion mark, but one billion, two billion, five billions means nothing if 
your platform is being compared to Ethereum on a constant basis and you still don't have more transaction than them. That's about to get re uh, resolve itself in a couple of days. Um, I think a bunch of people will probably uh, cover this article somewhere. I'm sure someone's going <laughs> to cover this in an article. But the crossover is is just recognition of the market. They're well, saying you're covering well, it right it, now. You're letting everyone know right now, and in, in nearly a hundred countries right now, you're telling everybody the crossover's <laughs> coming. You know, instead of saying winter is coming, you're saying the crossover is coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They uh, so. so if, I don't know if any of your audience is developers or wish to become one, uh, but I can tell you this. Uh, the main reason that people love Ethereum, uh, from what I've witnessed, is uh, you can still see the screen, right? Yes. Okay. So the main reason the people love Ethereum is glass. the smart contracts. I can see the Dragon Glass uh, link. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, so the main reason, yeah, the, the main reason people love Ethereum is for the smart contracts. It, it, that's the ERC-20, ERC-721. I, I, I can't quote it them all by heart, but they love the smart contract. The problem with smart contract, uh, besides the cost, and they're pretty expensive, is the fact that if you make a mistake with your smart contract, you, 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 can't, you can't fix it. it it's, that mistake is, is, is in the chain. It's, it's gone. And there's been some crypto scam uh, being exploited with smart contracts. Uh, if there are a solution to this, even though they do support smart contract, I'll bring that up down here. Uh, I'll make that bigger. So uh, this is in, uh, let's uh, let's do in the last month. So the statistics are a bit more reliable. Uh, so in the last month, um, the contracts, smart contracts on Adara, which is almost to the same speed as the one ran on Ethereum, and the price is close, maybe cheaper on Adara, uh, only 308 contract was ever made. But if you look at the consensus service or HCS, uh, 127 million transactions took place. People saw the benefit of using HES instead of smart contracts. It's not exactly the same thing. Smart contracts, you can program a lot of things that you can't do with HES, but you can use the HES to come to consensus um, and then run uh, room privately uh, the rest of your of your operation. So you don't have to run everything on the network and increasing that cost. Uh, the other thing is that uh, smart contracts on Adara is about at 10 TPS, uh, on Ethereum is about 15 TPS, so not a big difference in speed. And the HCS run at the native speed, which is right now 10,000 TPS. So cheaper, faster, less chance of uh, breaking something in your programming because uh, there are consensus service is just a basic coding compared to how much you would have to put in smart contract i'm not a developer but it it's common sense that a smart contract you can't make a single mistake and if there are consensus servers uh there's less room for mistakes it, easier to run things locally for the rest of your operations so as you can see, the market has validated this already on the Edera side, but you can't, they can't do that on the Ethereum side because there's no such thing as a consensus service on Ethereum. You, you have to use whatever services they have. So that crossover is going gonna, is gonna to mean a lot of things. It's going to say people are going to are gonna be going and they're going to be saying, okay, Ethereum was good. It, it, it served my business for a certain amount of time, but you know what? I want cheaper, faster, and less risk. And they'll, they'll see that market recognition once there are takes over that uh, total transaction. How many companies so far to date, are you able to see how many companies are, are utilizing Hedera right now? Well, the only companies that we can know about is the one that actually tells Hedera. Because if you go to, uh, here, I'll, I'll pull up a, an account here uh, randomly. Uh, let's say uh, 12,458. 12, See, this one was probably used temporarily because they they it's zero H bar. I'd have to go to back to here. Uh, the biggest, I think they're down here somewhere. There's a place where it, it tells me the biggest one. I did maximize the screen here. Uh, I know of a wallet, I, but I'm not going to bring my wallet on the screen. <laughs> Let's try this one. Uh, 2076, the early investors would be in the 850. Uh, no, actually, I'm not looking for an account here. Let's look for an account. Look up, yeah. Let's look up for an account. Uh, see, no memo field, public key, 008. 
250 accounts. I think I feel like I need to be on hash hash dot info. Let me bring that up. I, th I think that's the one I remember now. Uh, you'll see what that is. Uh, hash hash dot info. All right. Well, we are uh, did it. What do you call it? Um, sh it's not clear. The screen's not clear again. It's off fuzzy again. Uh, it, it's probably going to polish it. It's because I keep moving stuff and Discord is terrible at streaming. Uh, that's probably what it is, right? Uh, yeah. Rank. That's uh, hard base clean supply. Transaction counts. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let me see if I can't fix the, uh, there the you fuzziness go. Got here. It. You got it? Okay. Yeah. You are a magician. All right. <laughs> I'm on the hash hash dot info right now. It's a different explorer. The layout is completely different too. Uh, not my favorite site, but it does help you get comparison. Like if you would put an account up there, it tells you your ranking among all other uh, account out there. So right now there's an account uh, eight nine seven four eight. It's possible it's an exchange. Um, that kind of Look, 24-hour transaction volume, 1.4 wow. uh, million, million H bars. So it's got to be an exchange. But uh, what's nice to see here uh, on this website, yeah, the, the stream is definitely affecting my internet connectivity. I've never seen this. And I have high speed here. This is so weird. That is nuts. It has to... Yeah, it has to be that. Let me see if I can refresh the screen here. I'll, I'll say I can, if I can cut the screen, refresh, and reconnect the stream. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm still I'm still here. I just I, okay. I'm just trying to see if cutting the stream does something. Uh, let's see here. Let's bring up. Yeah. Yeah. That's. No, it just. Yeah, it's, something's really weird for the internet connection here. Mm, conspiracy theories, huh? <laughs> uh, well, well, oh, I, uh, I speaking speaking of conspiracy theories, uh, I do have one. Uh, let me Shoot. try it. Yeah, what do you uh, I'll bring it back. Uh, let, let let me tell me when you see the screen back. All right. Okay, it's back. Watch stream. Let's see what we got. And we got it. Okay. Okay. So there's a guy. I'm gonna try to find this message. I can't tell you who it was because I don't want to uh, talk about someone I didn't. Uh, I didn't get consent to share. Uh, this, <laughs> but this is you're talking about the conspiracy theory, right? Yes. So okay, I have the name of the user. Um, I'm going to try to find his original message and I'll just share a screenshot of what he wrote, but I won't, uh, I won't show who wrote it. Uh, and watch you screw that up so bad. <laughs> show him, like, <laughs> whoops, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to make sure this time is, uh, if I can find his name, there we go. Find his name. Just need to see when he posted. Uh, and this is regarding the yes. death, right? Uh, uh, conspiracy theory. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I, I I got something here. I'm gonna snapshot here. You won't be able to see what that was, and I'll see if I can share that on my screen. Mm -hmm. No, no. I'm trying not to share his username. <laughs> uh. Okay. There we go. And then I'll see how that works on Discord because. Uh, it needs to share the monitor actually. Uh, change windows. Oh, screens. There we go. Let, let's make that better. I'll, I'll share the screen because I kept sharing the. Uh... There. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, so I'm sharing the monitor instead of the screen. That will have less problem here. Um, so he posted this. Quick. Apparently, learn.edera.com was added to a block list. Um, it, it was, um, he, he brought up the issue. Uh, he has a different username, but he brought up the issue, but uh, someone uh, despised the fact that there was so much competition in the space that they went out of their way to block it there. There's, there's already jealousy forming in the market. I am not joking. Um, 
people are uh, certain projects are seriously scared about Adara's uh, move to the market. Any any project that is doing um, what Adara is currently doing, so anything similar, um, should be scared. I, I hate to say this, but they're they're coming in strong, um, and I can show you uh, further evidence that they are coming in strong. Uh, so I will go to core market cap. Uh, yeah, we'll go back to well, 27. I, I know this for a fact because uh, from my experience, and I'm just talking about my experience, with a new uh, channel, the C3 Media YouTube channel, just having Christian on the podcast, one person has overwhelmingly brought so much viewers to, uh, to, to the channel. And it's a new channel, and I wasn't expecting so many people to show up, but it just shows that... Mm -hmm that Hedera is, they're coming in, you know, the winter is coming. If not, something else is coming, right? Hedera is coming, you know. Uh, are you able to see this? I can. Okay, it says rank 204. That was October 27, 2019. Rank 204, Hedera hash graph. See, snapshot, October 27, 2019. And if I look at market cap right now, uh, market cap, Hedera is right now at... Uh, where are we? 54. So, so it went from 204 to 54. That's 150 ranks. They 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 passed over 150 coins in the span of um, was months. it a, a a year and a half? Uh, October October? No, no, oh, actually, 19, year, uh, October 2019. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. A year a year and a half. A year and a half. I, I dare you to find a, a project that did so much momentum. Um, there's something else that you need to know. So if um, I didn't have it bring it up on my screen, but last year, about the same time last year, they were positioned 47. Uh, if someone needs to verify the information, they just have to go to core market cap. They add a slash, they put historical, and they get this calendar, and they can pick the calendar to see the ranking position of That's any cool. crypto. Um, so in this case, uh, if I were going back to, uh, yeah, let's go May 1st, 2020, our closest one to, so May 3rd, close enough. Okay. And then I go to look for Adara, uh, Adara's position, 47. Can you zoom in on but that? There, because uh, I can't really see that with all the you know, uh, fuzziness. Sure, 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 it's 47 here. 47, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, so you're like, oh, it went down seven ranks, but that's not what happened. So uh, I'll provide some context. So. The fact that it's at seven ranks lower, new projects came out that didn't exist last year that had a higher evaluation. So because they came out with a higher evaluation, of course that bumped down the position. And I actually kept a list of all those projects uh, to see if Adara was performing. And indeed, it, it didn't even lose pace. It actually gained a rank. Uh, it just got bumped because others were uh, uh, evaluated higher when they came out. Uh, so if I look at my list, uh, okay, so here's the list. Uh, we're talking about a difference of seven ranks, so I should be able to find seven projects at the very least that came out with a higher valuation out of the gate. Polkadot, Uniswap, Filecoin, PancakeSwap, Av, Avalanche, Compound, and Alron. That is eight projects. All those not, are not pretty seven. much, and all those are pretty much listed on uh, Coinbase. Yeah, and and they're they're less than one year old. So they they came out um, when I showed you the ranking okay. position forty seven. Um, that none of those projects were there. The they reason, came out with the, the high. The reason I say that that they're listed on Coinbase is because it, it, I, I, I'm going to elaborate on that fact because Coinbase, in my opinion, is the conspiracy theory. If they're listing anything on their exchange, one, they are taking a huge profit of, of the uh, project, obviously paying their way into Coinbase. And two, they mm -hmm. themselves hold a large volume of the coin itself on, the, on their own behalf. So obviously when people are trading um, on day one, day two, and day three on, on Coinbase, they are pumping the heck out of that thing. And of course, Coinbase is just gonna take a little profit off the top every single time. Uh, so for them, it's a win-win-win-win. Yes. Well, think of it this way: if you are an exchange and you're moving annually, um, it's got to be trillions of dollars they're moving annually, um, and they're not. Uh, I, I haven't checked the math, but it has to be. Let, let me see. Does it say here? Uh, volume, 24-hour period for Bitcoin alone is 39 billion, and 
If you did 39 billion times 365 days, that gives us uh, four, 14 trillion. So yes, they, they must be moving, uh, just a portion of common base must be moving yearly trillions of dollars. Yeah. And they get always a percentage of those fees. Um, think of it this way. You are an exchange, you're offering multiple products, and then you have a product that has the potential of kill, killing off other projects that uh, uh, people are short-term trading. You, you know that bringing this project on board will kill your potential for exchanges on a short-term trade because everyone's investing in Adara right now, for the most part, are doing it on the long term, not the short term. And exchanges make money on short terms, not long term trading. If you buy and you don't sell for two years, they only made a sell on that single transaction. So it's not profitable for them to get projects like Hedera, and they know that's going to hurt their ecosystem if they do accept it. That's why they're on the potential list, but they haven't taken it yet. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on to the next topic here. I want to ask you um, regarding. Um, projects being built on Hedera. I had uh, JT, the CEO of the Join Social Media Platform. Have you heard about that? Uh, oh. No, yeah, if you can fill me in. Oh, well, Join is pretty much a, a Facebook version um, just built on Hedera. You can go to, uh, what is it, Join joinsocial.com, I think uh. it is. Uh, oh, the Dario as as that. Oh, there we Sorry. Go. It, uh, nice. I, I got it too. Wow. Yeah, I, I, it must have it must have been the Discord team because I I switched to monitor and it loaded up just fine. So, so Discord uh, so, is a conspiracy, huh? <laughs> Two point five billion ad events, which means that they recorded uh, micro impressions of their advertisement to a total of two point five billion of them. And you're wondering how they can possibly do that with only 820 million transactions well which each transaction they do they can include multiple information within within that bundle so they don't need to do a, a transaction per event they can do a, a transaction to cover 10 events that's why you, you have this discrepancy with the total amount but for them for them as a business they were able to monitor 2.5 billion micro imprints uh, micro impressions um, if you do advertisement some people may, may know what that means um, that's a that's a huge deal they they're able to monitor 2.5 billion clicks Wow and that's something imagine that... if they imagine if you had to do that on ethereum that the, che oh, the cheapest you had it. to <laughs> it, would, it wouldn't work it wouldn't work no they bankrupt by now yeah yeah and that's and that's the thing that I was mentioning off air I might have said it on air as well that uh, there was there was a lot of good projects early on in Ethereum, but unfortunately, as the Ethereum fees continuously uh, grew, um, small projects that had a small budget was not able to um, obviously flourish forward because they were still developing their product. And as as they continuously utilize their platform, uh, which is what they want to do overall, obviously you want to use the platform as much as possible, whatever project they're working on, but. The more and more you do transactions, the more and more you're burning your, your profits. And it's one of those things that uh, after after a while, if there's n not active users slash customers utilizing the product slash platforms, then it pretty much goes belly up. And unfortunately, that's where thousands and thousands of, of uh, projects pretty much went belly up. So I would like to see a, uh, like a... a, a a revitalization of all those dead projects not all of them obviously a lot of them were scams so this is the way i divide it in three sections obviously there are the good projects the ones that have a perfect portfolio perfect plan perfect vision moving forward and developing on hedera then you got the the second part which is a bunch of scams and they know what they're doing they're just doing scams and then you got the third section um that obviously are brand new learning to develop have a very small budget but they obviously want to do what they can to to help uh become decentralized and help either nations uh have their own business projects platforms decentralization media media information like c3 media it's 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 one of those things that hedera will help a lot a lot of companies here in the near future if not now Yeah, we, I think I think we we run in a situation of a wait and see. Um, 
I don't think we've discussed this together before. Uh, I don't know how, how much of your audience is a believer in Bitcoin, and I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> um, let's let's uh, stick to the basics. We we can all agree. Uh, I, I think you can agree with me that uh, Bitcoin is considered uh, block, blockchain version 1.0. I, I I think that's a uh, um, a general consensus. I mean, every time they do a blockchain, they try to make it faster, cheaper, and so on. So they're trying to improve on uh, on Bitcoin. I think if we want to see market recognition for a lot of projects, uh, we need to see Bitcoin uh, dethroned from the first position. I'm not saying that the, the price needs to fall. It just needs to swap. Like with Ethereum, with Ripple, it doesn't matter who it swaps. But it needs to swap with someone else in its position to show that the market is ready for change. And when the market is going to be ready for change, and that's when we'll see some very interesting things happening. Okay. Yeah, that is uh, that does hurt a little bit because I'm kind of I'm wondering wh why does it matter that it needs to be dethroned? Well, you go go on the street right now. Um, speak to anyone that you find on the street, and you tell them, "Hey, have you heard about Bitcoin?" Everyone will say yes. Right, uh, and they associate Bitcoin with blockchain and blockchain with Bitcoin. But the technology is, is a lot more than that. There's product, out, uh, there's project out there that do nothing of what Bitcoin is. It's it's a blockchain, or it could be a public DLT, which is not necessarily a blockchain. Um, and they have a function that is completely different than Bitcoin. It's not better. It's not superior. It's just different. And this project doesn't see any recognition because people think only hearing about Bitcoin, um, that that's the only thing that's out there. It, it, in this podcast, uh, in your audience, they know that there's more than just one crypto. But you talk to 99% of the population on the planet and you say, hey, have you heard about Ethereum, Ripple, any of these? None of them is going to ring a bell. The moment you, that they start doing on the news a, a different crypto that they say that there's a crypto here that took the spot let's say it's polka dot dogecoin i found the <laughs> sure sure we'll, we'll say dogecoin i, I wouldn't want to see that but <laughs> let, let, let's say dogecoin takes the place then people are going to have a realization that something is happening then then it's really going to pique people's interest because right now you only have two worlds you have a people that are curious about crypto and they're looking into it and you have a uh, people that's like yeah okay yeah i've heard but bitcoin and the conversation ends there they they only think that the net uh, that out there only bitcoin exists so until the news media starts covering a different one as the number one spot people won't find the topic interesting it's like uh it's like a person making a car and there's only one brand of car and you don't know there's other brand of car it's not an interesting topic the moment there's another brand that comes out then it becomes an interesting topic. I, um, I, I think the best reference I can give it uh, recently is uh, Tesla's electric cars, right? And until other companies start to really push their electric cars, everyone said, yeah, I know Tesla, it's electric cars. And people were like, it's a niche market. But then you start seeing these giants starting to advertise their electric car. There's uh, even, um, I forgot what the name of the company is. They're making their elec uh, electric pickup truck. And I'm sure someone would know the uh, name of that uh, truck, but they Cyber they show that uh, which one? You're talking about Cybertruck? No, 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 no. That the Cybertruck is not even uh, in market. They know it's a different one. So uh, they show a dem demonstration of it uh, pulling um, uh, a train. Uh, it was like 50 car trains. Um, the you know the car the cars from a train, but it was pulling something like 50, and, and the truck was electrical. Oh, you're uh, they about that, like the they made a right? the semi truck. It, okay, yeah, it's uh, no, it wasn't a semi truck. Oh man, you you gotta make me Google that, aren't you? Oh, man, well, I want to know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At least it's a semi truck uh, pulling uh, train cars. Let's see if I can find the uh, uh, you made me type in semi truck. You don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you made me <laughs> uh, pick up trucks. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So that's that's one. Uh, it wasn't the four. It wasn't the four electric, but uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm just. I, I'm just. Yes. Nah, come on. So there. 
they're pulling cars used for a train it's an electrical car an electric car anyway yeah the, the point i'm tr trying to make for with this example is that people don't realize the market is ready for change until something else comes along if you only have one product one topic then people find it curious but not enough to go so 99 percent of the market is on tap because Bit bitcoin is still at the top and you don't have to have bitcoin losing that position forever it just needs to swap just enough to for other people to hear that there's another project that's when you'll start seeing some crazy movement in this what space. i think is going to happen is that those 99 percent of people aren't going to care about those top the, the investors care yes but the average uh the average joe out there is only going to care that they have a card that says visa on it Obviously, Visa developers are, will you utilize something like Hedera. They don't need to tell customers what they're what they're doing on the back end. They just need to be mm -hmm. able to give a nice, pretty, shiny card to its customers. And the customer, all they care about is receiving that card and doing those transactions, without knowing what the heck is going on the back end. And I think that's the reality of of, of the average person out there. Yeah, well, we'll see because there, there's the different market. There's use case, use case market, and the investors. Exactly. Investors yeah. is, is what move the um, the the market value of that project. Um, and and it's the thing uh, on a proof of stake model, you really need volume, uh, volume and value, both of them. Um, proof of stake model requires that the crypto is, so to speak, unaffordable. But we're referring to unaffordable by uh, illicit parties. A proof of work does not require that. Proof of work requires mining machines. It requires a lot and a lot of re hardware resources. Proof of stake models requires capital, and the higher capital it is on the uh, on the token in question, the more secure it is over time. So you you do want investors as well, not just use cases. It it's getting there. We're not we're not there yet. Um, you might remember last year, I think it was or the year before Ethereum Classic. There was an an attack to it. Um, yes. Part of it was forked. I, I'm trying to remember the detail, but uh, uh, Ethereum Classic uh, was a proof of work system. This was uh, like late if, last year during like the hot holidays, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Did they all fork replay attacks? Yeah. That I overheard something. I'm not following too much, but yeah, there was some something where it came. Uh, it came close and endangering uh, a term classic. And that's just a proof of work system. Uh, so proof of work system is based on uh, people, you know, you, you could rent, uh, you can rent cl cloud mining. Mm -hmm. you, you could technically rent the resources long enough for an hour or two uh, to hijack the network. And once you've hijacked the network, you don't need that m many resources. Uh, you just need to be able to fork it long enough that your chain is the one that is the main chain. Bitcoin requires um, at least an hour. I, I think uh, at least an hour of um, uh, of high cloud mining, and that's hard to do today. Uh, you, you need some pretty crazy uh, supercomputers to pull that off, and a bunch of them. So I, I don't see Bitcoin uh, having this issue anytime soon. But if if ever their mining network um, reduces over time, uh, I and I say that maybe ten years from now, uh, not recently then it, it's a potential, it's a potential risk. But w with a proof of stake model, it's about how much money is into the project. And the more money there is in the project, the harder it is to um, to fork the platform. Mm -hmm. um, use case, you said use case, uh, Adara, right? Yes. Um, so if people go to adara.com slash users, then they can find all the ones that um, they approach Adara. So they, they go, they see Adara, they says, hey, I have a use case. Uh, would you be willing to put it on their website? If they don't tell Adara this, then there's no way for Adara to know that someone is making a project using the network. So that means these are the only one that, two things. First of all, uh, they actually have a use case. They, 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 don't, they don't take speculators. You actually have a use case. And the second thing is um, Edera, uh, Edera accepts uh, listing on the site. So all of these, in some ways, uh, were verified for Edera before they were they got listed, and they have a use case today. Now you may be working on a project at this very moment, but if you don't tell Edera about it, they have no way of knowing it because all you you are on the network is a, an account number. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'll 
open up a separate window. So you're just a number on the network when, when you're using it. You're just an account number. Let's go down here, uh, down, down here. These are, these are the network metrics right now. So if you made an account right now and you wanted to make an app and your company uh, wanted to be on the network, you would be account uh, 0.0.203.86.5. Uh, huh. They have no way of knowing who that is. So you could build anything on the network, and it's uh, completely immune to uh, censorship. There is a network that doesn't monitor who you are. Even if you told them who you were and you don't tell them your account number, they still wouldn't know who you are uh, from the, the accounts on the network. They can only speculate, and th that doesn't serve oh, them. That's interesting. Uh, that's really interesting. Yeah. So uh, these are all the projects, and there's quite a few, so I, I won't go through them because the list is too long. Uh, but I think there's something like 51 that they know about, and that they were okay to uh, to list on their site. So, so hold on, uh, these, these are these are places that I can go to utilize their services right now, right? Yeah. So uh, let's take a random one that I haven't seen before. See, I've I've never seen this. I don't know who that is. So this is a retailer. Uh, his name is Ma Malexi. Maybe I should have taken someone that's easier to pronounce. Uh, Access Inventory Marketplace. So what do they do? Uh, it's a B2B solution, distributed ledger technology-based marketplace that allows sellers and buyers to trade excess inventory. That, that's actually pretty good. Um, so they must be using a trust layer to show uh, the inventory of different companies. And because it's not a centralized storage, they can trust the data that's being loaded. That that makes sense. Uh, how many times did uh, companies have to throw out uh, excess inventory because they couldn't find a seller? Mm -hmm. uh, let, let's click Learn More, see what happens. Uh, here we go. So we get a brief description of who it is, CEOs, um, companies in the excess inventory, 63 million, global excess inventory market size, 151 billion. I'm sure they have a website too. Let me see if their link is there. Uh, view all, no, that would go back to the user. So I think I would have to search them up. Oh, there we go, visit website. I, I've never heard of this project. Uh, people tend to, to share. Uh, use cases of Adara. Uh, this is the first time I'm taking a look at it. So I, I have no clue if this, this thing is really solid or where they're at right now. But uh, yeah, this is an example. I guess they um, I guess they use Adara to advertise stock. Hmm. They, they actually have cameras here. Okay, I'm not going to do chopping, but I think, I think is, you can. This is quite interesting. So hmm. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Do you think that all these products um, have their own um, unique ident uh, identifier u utilizing Hedera? Yes, they, they, they must they must be on the network somehow for them to track it. Uh, wow. Absolutely. They, um, but I'm not like I said, I'm not a developer, so that goes slightly beyond what I would be able to tell you. But I know there's something be happening behind the scene for them to track all of these. Oh, wow. We're, they're not kidding about excess. Uh, look at this. This bullet camera, 2 megapixel. They're selling for thirty three forty five, and they have two hundred fifty units. I don't know about you, but uh, I'm pretty sure a wireless camera. It's uh... okay. Yeah. So, so th that's their model. I don't think it's the biz biggest business model that there is out there. But you know, now now, now that you got me started, I need I need to take a look if there's uh, <laughs> is is there another one that I've never heard about? Uh, a lot of these I've I've researched myself. Um, Galaxy, by the way, is. Um, I think it's a basketball player or a baseball player. Uh, that's how it started. I, I'll show you a glimpse, but I've, I've seen this one before. Um, yeah, it goes straight to websites. It's, this is in beta, and there's um, I think it's a basketball player, a famous one that started this service. So the sport industry is getting exposure from this. Um, see, direct messaging everyone to say congrats to Ezekiel Elliott on a win. Or get a special workout advice from your favorite trainer. Now you can with direct messages and chat. It's probably uh, utilizing it there to do that too. That's vote really on big cool. de vote on big decision from what shoes to wear on the court in tonight's big game to what this is not. Uh, uh, yeah, and they're in beta access. A lot of these projects are early. Some are live cases. This market is just starting. Uh, okay, last one, last one, and then uh, if you have a questions, I. See, Clink, I don't know what this is. Uh, Geosocial Gaming, 
a game implement to restore magic to the world of. In- I think that's um, similar to uh, like Pokemon Go uh, in terms of design, uh, creating connection through proof of community. Well, uh, they're they're right very now, as of right now, it's really fuzzy. Um, let's see. Do you magic? Yeah. Do you magic? I I don't think I'll fix it because there, there's not much on the screen to to look at. They're okay. in, they're in beta. Um, they probably have disclosed what they're trying to do with Adara, but because of a DNA, uh, only Adara would know what they're up to. So this one, as you can see, they're so early that you have to sign up to, to get an update when they, they're starting launching. This is new. I've never heard of Clinks. I don't know what they're up to. Ecclesia, I've never heard. Diamond Standard, um, I think it's for traceability for diamonds, I guess. Uh, Dragon Glass, we all, we saw that one. That's the uh, Explorer. This is a oh, decentralized okay. exchange. Okay, so is, is Hex affiliated with that, that Hex coin? I don't believe so. I'm getting a bit confused on that level. I, I had my question myself um, on Coin Market Cap. What's, what what's his name? Uh, uh, Richard Hart, I think it is, right? Rich, Richard. I yeah, I, I'm actually bad with names. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at X. Let's see if it's uh. Well, no, I search up X. That let's try that again. X. Come on, Coin Market. There we go. Let's see what the definition is, and we'll know. Uh, no, no, I don't believe so because here, this this X token is an RC20 token launch on the Ethereum network. Uh, that would make no sense, and there's no reference of uh, Adara on this. Okay. So I think there's two two things called X. I mean, it's a very common word to use. Uh, they use that word in gaming all the time, so it's I'm sure there'd be a a conflict of interest. Um, they, they probably would have to call it X crypto or something, and this one they're calling it. Now let's let's visit the website. Yeah, the logo is different, right? Yep. That looked like the different logo. Yeah. So they're both called X, but it, no, it's not the one that's listed on uh, Coin Market Cap. And what it is, it's a decentralized exchange uh, using Adara. So you, you, there's no, it's not stored anywhere. And it's using Adara to um, to decide who's the winner of a bid. Uh, who was first to place that bid and so on. So similar to what Exchange are usually doing right now, but instead of a, a server, the, the remains that were deciding this, it, it's a server that they don't host themselves. So they they um, they have a liability they don't have to claim here. Um, there we go. Fair ordering of trades via Edera consensus service. Huh. Nice. Yeah. I've never used their exchange. I'm, I'm usually pretty loyal when I uh, start a product. Um, I started with Bitrix. And the reason I'm still with Bitrix is that they were the first one to offer the uh, HBAR USD pair. Why don't you use Hotbit? Uh, so I, which one? Hotbit. Hotbit? No, I, I, I'm, I'm big on loyalty. And Bitrix was the first first one that offered the pair and i was going to buy that with usd so i i, I needed uh, well, I'm just, uh fiat i'm just saying i don't even know if hotbit list uh, had there i'm just saying that because yesterday they were hacked uh, uh we could check uh there is a place with that too uh oh, there we go so on wallet and exchanges so if you go there oh. Uh, BitGo, uh, yeah, custodial, custodial services. So that means there's a company that manages your finances for you. Um, it's a lot um, easier not forgetting your private key when you're using custodial services, hardware. Um, those ones rely on you keeping your your private key. Uh, software, software, custodial. Uh, Exodus, um, I've heard good things about Exodus the, for their wallet services so if you're trying to create an account and you don't have one um, and that's something people don't know about it there when you want to have a, an account with them you have to ask someone else to create that account for you it's it's not like your crypto where you can um, other chains where you can create your account at no cost everything that happens on the Adara network has a cost however as you can see here oh uh, I didn't want to click it I wanted to highlight it uh, right here, it says instant account creation. So they take care of the account creation for you. They, they just assimilate that fee. Um, it, it costs five cents to create an account on Adara. 
And the reason is that they don't want someone to spam this uh, system and shutting it down. You can do that to any network if the, the fee is zero. You can spam the network, say, hey, I want to create an account, I want to create an account, and you do that a thousand times. You can slow down the network, but if you put a fee, you're mitigating that uh, po a potential attack. Anything that's free is a chance for a, an attack on the network. Uh, it actually, Ethereum does have free services, and I can actually show that. Uh, this is Etherscan again. Right here. Zero Ether. Zero Ether. These didn't cost anything. So if someone knows how to program and has access to a couple of machines that you hijacked, um, whatever scenario, it, it costs less resources for your machine to what's submit. That, what's that on the right? You go a little further down. Uh, to the right? Yeah, look. look. Just move your, your mouse over. Right there. Here? Yeah. Uh, this is, yeah, it says transaction fee, but it's here it says zero ether. So it's kind of weird. Here it says, it, it, look, it says there's a fee here, but here it repeats that same fee. And in fact, they say the value is zero. Maybe, maybe it's actually, they're not moving ether, but there is an actual fee. Yeah, their website is not uh, straightforward. You might be right. These are actual fees. Yeah, fees, fees, fees. They're not moving ether. So what is this? transfer so they're transferring at a fee of 0 0.001 that i think that's ethereum right 0 0.001 ethereum yeah that's all ethereum yeah yeah i don't i don't believe they put usd here but it's yeah it's, it's kind of strange uh i their explorer i wish it was broken down a bit more if you uh, if you look at a transaction that happens on Ethereum, and we can look at actually at one of those um, I had hash hash. Did I have it open? Let's go back to hash hash that info. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show the people watching uh, what it looks like when you're looking at a breakdown of a transaction so on Ethereum. If, if you can fix the fuzziness, then they can see what uh, you're. Do you oh like, yes, do you uh, magic. Magic time. Magic time. Did it do anything now? No. Three, okay. two, one. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Nice. Yeah, it's it's really weird. <laughs> All I'm doing is is playing with the FPS. That makes no logical sense. I'm telling you, <laughs> that's the that's Discord being annoying. Um, okay. So I'm just looking for. See, it's really weird. Your Discord is really affecting my connection. It's the craziest thing I've seen. Weird, huh? uh, I don't remember the account by heart let's uh let's look up for an account on dragon glass because i need to show you what a transaction actually looks like uh, i'm just going to pull up dragon glass so it's, it's quite different than any other network the way a transaction works on adara um so we're gonna try oh no actually the account number is here let's try uh let's try this account please tell me there's funds there or it's just the, the the darn thing doing its thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because I refuse to believe that there's that many account with zero balance. It's current balance right one there. one one H bar. <laughs> I I could pull the bigger accounts, but uh, sure, I'll I'll pull up the original account. Twenty five. Yeah, there there is definitely something happening with my connection because every account I'm pulling, they're they're showing at zero. The twin, the twenty four account that was created in there as a balance of zero. No, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll pull up zero two. Hey, okay, yeah, that, all right. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I don't want to use that one as an example because that's not a user's account. Okay, yeah. So this is probably one of the um, accounts belonging to the original people who started uh, there. I don't think that's Mance or Lehman. Uh, but one of the maybe big five, there's a, a couple of people from their team. So the Swell, uh, some of the members from Swell, that's probably one of their accounts. Unfortunately, because everything is not mentioned online, you have no way of knowing uh, to who that account belongs. You can track it. You know where the funds are going. Uh, we're looking for a transaction, and there's no transaction shown on this one. Uh, maybe I mean, if what, I looked what up. Is that? Are, oh. they, are they locked up or what? No, they, well, they, that could be a possibility. Yes, they, their funds could be locked up. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, we can see the nodes here. So let's check node 17. 
I if I pull up my account, we can see a transaction, but I really, really don't want to do that right now. Um, Make sure you show your okay. private keys if you're going to do that. No, I, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't show my private keys. Um, and I'm not rich by any means. It's just uh, I don't want to show my balance. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Okay, there, there, we have a good one. Please, please, please. Yes, work yes, let me work, fix it. Work your magic real quick before you continue on. <laughs> we need to use something else in Discord next time. I know. I know. Uh, stream quality. We'll try. We'll try Zoom next time. Okay. Good. Good now. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Way better. Thank you. Yeah. Zoom. De definitely Zoom next time. All right. So here uh, is an account. The account zero point zero point twelve eleven. Uh, again, don't know who it belongs to, but luckily for us, there's transaction on it. And from what I can tell here, uh, that could potentially be an investor, based on the activities there. Are you can see they kind of very far apart. If it, this was a if this was a developer, uh, what they would be doing is they would be uh, loading it up. So you'd see credit, and then you would see hundreds of thousands of maybe tens of thousands of debit for all those API calls they do. And then you do you do another credit, and again the cycle would repeat. Uh, but that looks like an investor because there's also a substantial gap, and they credit their account. Uh, you can almost guess when they. <laughs> <laughs> when they bought the H bar too, so you could probably know how much they paid for it. That looks like an investor's account. So let's take a look at the most recent one. Eleventh uh, February, twenty twenty. They bought. Uh, these are a tiny H bar, and the conversion is uh, you have to divide by a hundred thousand, if I remember correctly, to know how many H bars. But that's how many tiny H bar that they move over to their account. And if you click on it. Uh, let's see, transaction, uh, crypto transfers, oh yeah, DI, there we go, there we go, perfect, I'll make that a slightly smaller, and, no, not this one, get rid of that, all right, so this is a breakdown of a transaction, just a simple transaction, and then I'll show you how much he got charged at the time, um, this is transaction hash, that sh shows that transaction, um, uh, this transaction took place, and if you copy that hash and you put it on Explorer, uh, it will bring you back to that transaction. So it's kind of a, a, a signature verified. Now, the person who paid to that account looks like it's 16953, most likely an exchange. Uh, looks like the node 10 was involved with that transaction. Uh, transfer amount, 100,000 tiny H bar, transaction fee. That that's ridiculous. These are tiny H bar transactions for thirty four thousand, which is probably like point point one point. Uh, let me see. Divided by hundred thousand, right? So thirty four thousand two hundred thirty six divided by hundred thousand. Uh, that's point thirty four H bar. So he paid point. Transaction fee says he paid point thirty four H bar for that transaction to to move it, and by today's would be quite a bit. And hopefully I did the calculation correctly here, but that was probably when the H bar was like a penny. That was um, February 2020, and it was going around a penny back then. So that makes sense. Um, total amount that was transferred. Uh, you could see the raw transaction, and I wouldn't be able to quote this, but this is what uh, the network sees when they're uh, spreading that around. Now the I signature. Can't, I can't see anything now that you scroll down. Really? Oh my God! Yeah, we need to do Zoom next time. There you go. Thank you. Um, so these are these are the transact uh, transaction breakdowns. So what the network sees, like if you're looking at the code and That's seeing what happened, uh, consensus. Yeah, uh, the transaction hash is here. The consensus timestamp. So when the network agrees, and it's it's pretty down specific. Uh, according to this, is April thirtieth, twenty twenty one, for the consensus type timestamp, and that was. 5:09, 5 p.m. 09, 13.62461. These are fractions of seconds. 4 p.m. Sorry. Uh, 4 p.m. For yeah, for 4 p.m. Uh, for for <laughs> 4 p.m. Nine minutes, 13 seconds, and 6256. Uh, anyway, they they're going into microseconds. Wow. Um, the Consistent time step is important because you need to know which transaction came first, so you can't uh, you can't double spend. the The problem with the 
problem with double spending is is literally this using tokens or edge bars are not there so they use a consensus timestamp to come to that you, you can see it here what, um, what is that right no hold on hold on, hold on. the ballot start which, date ballot start date so that's when the transaction that's when the transaction took place um so they set their request on the network then and that's when it came to consensus uh, according to the mirror note now there is a 11 seconds gap there but that's not um, that's not when the network really received the information that's when the mirror note received it uh, they need to uh, they need to report what the network is seeing because right now uh, if you go back uh, to h bar h bar one and you go on the screen the uh, fin finality is three to five seconds so the mirror node is is not reading what the transaction actually took place and i was able to test that myself um, i was one of the few that had the idera official wallet some people are using a different one but if you send a transaction and you refresh your your wallet five seconds later i guarantee you the balance has been updated already on your wallet it only takes five seconds to get a confirmation Nice. So uh, the yeah the mirror note is uh, is not reporting the quite the correct time step and and eleven seconds is still faster than what Ethereum is doing. Uh, they're they're in the 10, 10 to twenty seconds. But nice. I've done the test myself from my own wallet, and I could see the funds leaving in in, in five seconds. Max, can you really ex uh, can you really quick explain why um, the Hedera the the Hedera wallet's not not officially uh, open to public anymore? That's easy. Two reasons. Um, first of all, they don't want to be a centralized platform. And if you control, well, it's not seen as control, but if you have a, a network that you're maintaining and a wallet that you're maintaining, then that is a form of centralization because you're controlling the information that they see through the wallet and you're controlling the, uh, the way the, uh, the network comes to agreement. Even if the network does that in a decentralized way, the wallet, unfortunately, um, it's just software. You can update the software on the wallet and make it look like something else is happening. Uh, so what they did is they, they shared the source code for other people to take on that task so that it doesn't look like Ethereum has everything under their control. Their, their main purpose is to focus on the network, which is reason number two. They want to put all their efforts to make the networks as best as they can. That That's why they have these uh, regular updates. Um, I might be able to show up. But those. they produce it, it, some really good demos. Uh, the the services that they provide, the demo services they provide, it's amazing what they what they can turn and, and already have a, a turnkey product available for people to use. And it's kind of sad that like something like the wallet, all of a sudden now they uh, they said, oh well, yeah, thank you for using it, but we're gonna go ahead and just delist it now. It's like, well, come on, it's a good product. But I get your point though. I get your point. Uh, let's see if I can bring it up. Um, all this information does not require a special login, by the way. All this information is public. Uh, so if someone wanted to verify anything, they can. There is a website called docs.edera.com. Someone can go there, see uh, see the maintenance notes, what they using in terms of spec. Uh, see here. Do you uh, magic time? Sorry, you're breaking up magic time oh oh my god I know. I know it's like every time you go to another page thank you thank you uh, every time you go to another page it seems to uh, just uh, mess up go ahead yeah that that is just nuts all right um so i'm on docs.edera.com a great place for resources uh, especially if you're a developer or you want to know um what edera is up to i believe they have the um uh, the upgrades to the network. Uh, yes, under documentations, release notes. Uh, let's see if that is where it is. Yeah, perfect. It, it, there are services, and they it, it gives you a breakdown. Uh, what I was referring earlier, preview net, uh, which version they're running, and the upcoming version to the preview net, uh, test net, which version they're running, and right now the the main net it's version uh, version twelve. So right. On the testnet, they're ver running version 13.2, and uh, on mainnet 12, and their next update to the mainnet will be 13.2. And I think, uh, yeah, on the right side column, if you click on the releases, 
You can still see that, right? Yes. So uh, right side column, if you click on the rece releases, you can actually see uh, what the updates are for. It, it literally breaks it down for you. That's what, uh, that's what I really like about Hedera, because Hedera is so just, it explains everything in detail. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. It's like, when you go to the Hedera website, and, and when I showed Mike this website, my, my co-host, when he checked it out, he was just mind blown at how detailed Hedera was with, with all their information. And, and I agree with him. There's a lot of blockchains out there that they're good, but not as good as Hedera when it comes to uh, really detailing uh, their documents. Oh, uh, it's, it's more than this. Let me uh, refresh it in case that you missed it. Um, there we go. Just think, change the, I, I changed the FPS. Um, it even tells you, 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 first of all, you can't run a, a node right now, right? For Hedera. They, even though you can't run a node, full transparency, they tell you what a main net, uh, a main net, Hedera main net node requires in terms of specs. Full transparency. You, you won't be able to run it, but you know exactly what governing consoles uh, are running in terms of nodes. So that gives an idea when they go to semi-permission uh, permission node and anonymous nodes, what kind of specs people will, will see. We, they didn't have to share that information. They could have, they could have kept that private, but no, you, you get to see a preview of what they're up to. Hmm. Um, it, it gets more interesting. You, you, I love the fact that people says, oh, everything is private about it. There are, they hide a lot of information. That's what all the fathers are doing. Uh, I'll show you another one here. Uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, just in case it's fuzzy, I'll refresh it again. Oh, I like this. I didn't, I didn't realize, okay, I got to look through this. So these, uh, if, if you ever live in a building where you have a strata, uh, you're familiar with minutes. So these are the government minutes and you can look up their, uh, their minutes for a specific day. Uh, it takes them, I think a month or two to review the notes because there is, you have to keep in mind that these are big companies that might be working on projects that they're not ready to announce yet. Uh, big companies likes to keep things on their wrap until they're ready to uh, disclose their new tech. So because they have to review those notes before they release it, it, it takes a while to see those minutes, but the um, the last one they had in January 13th, or 20, uh, 2021, you can click on read. These are all the people that attended the uh, the minutes and questions. Uh, who was invited uh, invited as a guest? Uh, so anyone who was pretty important. That's um, you have FT Pass in Australia, which uh, is a big uh, payment processor there. And these are people utilizing Hedera. Uh, th th these are governing members. So whenever you see uh, in bold like this, that's a governing member. Governing is that, member is that Vitalik and, there? Is that by uh, Dicey Vitalik's name right there? Who Vitalik Buterin? Did we? The, let me check. Uh, let's do a search. No, uh, no, I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. No, I'll, I'll take Wait, a look. Wait, is it there? No, is it really? What? what? Is it? Is it? Is it? No, <laughs> I don't think. Did Vitalik. It come up? Vitalik. No, it doesn't come up now. Okay, wow, <laughs> that would have been crazy if it popped up. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be curious. I, I'd read it. Um, so, is there a use case? Ypro. Uh, so, Ypro goes in details of what what they're using network. Uh, obviously, they don't disclose everything because a uh, uh, company. Um, uh, what's the word when you're you're, you're spying on your uh in, in that industrial spying no no not in, industrial stealing there's a word for it yeah, uh, I forgot the word. yeah yeah we both know what we're saying yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so the industry big companies like to keep things secret they can disclose a few details so whatever they can include the minute they will um here we have committee reports and pricing plan proposal so whenever they want to make changes to pricing uh, there's a there's a committee that's involved with this uh, CoinCop and TechCom, I guess that that's what they call their committee. So Tech uh, Committee and Coin Committee, I, I'm assuming. Uh, then after that, we have Registrum. There is regular posture. Um, I guess Brett McDowell is the executive director and vice chairs. Mance Harmon. You know what I'm uh, going to do now? I'm going to read through all of these. I'm serious. I, I'm going to read there through all of them. Yeah, but there's a lot. <laughs> there's a I, lot I, of them. I, I'm one of those guys that uh, 
I appreciate a product. And if I can read like this stuff to me, I like this stuff. I, I can I can read this. I got many many days to read this. I can. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, yeah, yeah. It just gonna it's just gonna help me understand what Hedera is doing, and, and just be more yeah. comfortable with with Hedera. Like right now, you're helping me learn more about Hedera. Uh, believe it or not, you are. So I I thank you for that. Um, and I'm sure with with everyone that's watching and listening as well that don't even know what Hedera is, now they know Hedera.com. Check it out. There's um there's also uh, for Hedera people um, the biggest argument people say uh, it's centralized because it's patented. Well, guess what? Um, the source code may be patented, but it's actually also on GitHub. So if you think they're hiding something from you, then all you have to do is take a look at their GitHub and look at their source code because they made that transparent too. All right. So we've been on for, for a good minute now, but I kind of I want to ask you, um, is there any last little things that you want to talk about in regards to there? I'm curious, is there any upcoming projects that you know of uh, like I was mentioning uh, a little while ago, there's the, uh, the the join platform. That's one of them that I just ha I had JT on um, a couple days ago talking about. That. And I, I believe today's his release date for his app. It's either today or, or sometime here in the next day or two. Um, but that's supposed to be a Facebook um, version uh, built on on Hedera, and it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting if you watch that. Uh, uh, YouTube video or the interview or just listen to it on, on Spotify. You you just go to C3 Media and you'll see the um, the JT uh, JT interview on on, uh, on join. Uh, but other than that, uh, Max, do you know of any other projects that's coming up uh, or like Tune FM? Obviously, uh, really quick in a nutshell, Tune FM. If you could talk about mm -hmm. that, that's one that's uh, that's that's moving up pretty quick. Yeah, so Tune FM and they were called, um, how what was they called before? Uh, they uh, they had a name just before that. And Tune FM, let me see if I can find their names just before Tune FM. Hope. Oh. So for, for some context for Tune FM, they, they were actually a centralized platform. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Hero, Hedario. So, Hero FM is what they were called originally. And Tune FM is the network utilizing uh, Hedero. Uh, actually, they, <laughs> they, they just said it for me. Uh, music token powered by Hedero Hashgraph. So, anyone who doesn't know what Tune FM is, imagine you're a musician, um, you're starting in the business, and you want to be paid. But you don't want to be paid two years later. You, you want to be paid the moment someone listens to your song. Well, that's Heroes FM model. They've been like this before Dara came out. But their model, uh, based on the centralized system, wasn't perfect. It, I mean, he, there's so much that one system can handle. So they're utilizing the consensus service, and in this case, the token service, now just recently. I think it's even uh, on Dragon Glass, if you take a look. Again, full transparency. So, Dragon Glass, if you go... Is it fuzzy? Yes, it is, but that, that's okay. Uh, uh, okay, okay, let, let me refresh it. Uh, okay, that, that should do it. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, so if you can see it right here. Jam, that's what they call them, Jam Token. And that was created uh, at, can take a look when that was done. It did, this is a breakdown of their uh, profile for that gem token. Uh, and it was created, uh, no, expires May 20th, 2021. Uh, 2021 uh, when the date that was created. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I'm not too sure how to read all of this. It's brand new stuff. I mean, well, token well, service. On. What does that mean that expires in May 20th? That's in, that's in 20 days, uh, 19 days. Yes. So when you create a token, you can set an expiration date on it. That's to give you more leverage. You don't have to have one that expires soon. Uh, when a token expires, um, there'd just be a fee. Let, let's uh, let's find out what the fee would be. Uh, let's see. Because that is online. Uh, there are fees. 
It's going to bring up the site again. See how much more responsive my internet is when I'm not <laughs> using Discord. Um, okay, so token service. Uh, let's see, token create. Oh, wow. <laughs> A lot of stuff that goes into it. There we go. There's an option here for to auto renew account. Uh, let's see what the renewal is. If there's a section for token update, I guess I would fall under token update. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a developer. This is not going to make a lot of sense to me. There's a quite a lot of detail that goes into it. You're deciding how many admin keys, if there's even admin keys to begin with, it could be a complete decentralized token. But yeah, you see it defaults to zero admin keys, KYC keys. So that stands for know your customer. In some industries, that's a must. Uh, wipe keys, supply keys, they're all set to zero. So it's possible for someone to have no admin keys, no ways to freeze it. And if you have a company that you have a product, but you have to be um, regulated, then you would probably have three admin keys. Uh, because you don't want one person to have control of it. So uh, two-thirds of those keys would have to be used to make changes. Uh, the ability to freeze. So maybe one person has the freeze keys, that sort of things. Uh, wow, it's still pretty cheap. One-tenth of a penny t to do the update to the token. Okay, so in regards to 2NFM, since their, their uh, tokens are expiring, you said they can just renew that. So it's not... For me, knowing that if I, if I were to try to get some some uh what is it what's it called uh t um jam tokens um mm -hmm. are those just going to evaporate no no and there's there's been a conversation on uh on going back and forth about that um uh, what happens to an account that doesn't have any h bar because tokens is not h bars uh there's some individual that has zero dollar h bar in their account but they have tokens associated and uh, I think it was Greg Scullard that answered that question. I, I don't remember, so don't quote me too much on that one. Um, if there's no H bar, but they have there's token in that account, they will not close that account. They, they will keep that account open as long as those tokens still exist. And a person can set uh, an expiration date. See, there, it's right down here. I, I kind of missed that right here, expiration date. Now. Right now, the network is not charging for expiration, and I um, I can say I can show you how much it costs for a regular account and expiration. Uh, it's called crypto account auto renew, right here. Uh, I can't see it. Oh, it's doing that thing again, isn't it? Yeah, matrix. Matrix. There we go. Good. Yep. Okay. So th this is what the model they were supposed to kick in um, from day one, and they did not. Um, it's not like I'm disappointed, but they should have done that earlier. Uh, they're not charging a fee right now when your account expires. My account expired probably a long time ago, and they didn't charge a fee. And I wish they would. Um, uh, I'll explain why. <laughs> but I wish they would charge a fee. Um, 2,160 hours is the standard expiration for an account. So if you did that, divide by 24, translate to 90 days. So every 90 days, your account expires. And then your audience is probably freaking out right now. It's like, oh my God, they're going to charge me through the news. So let's see how much they charge. Oh. <laughs> so so, 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 so to, to renew your account, they charge you uh, every three months uh, one fiftieth of a cent. That's so, so, awesome. So so let's uh, let's do fifty, multiply by ninety days, uh, divided by three hundred sixty-five. So if you had only one penny in your H bar account, it would not expire until twelve years. So I I had an argument saying that this is too low of a fee. Wow. So <laughs> okay, hold did... on a second. Why do you need renewal fees? Because there's a cost associated to have your account on your network at any times, they need to be able to pull that information. They it's stored, right? But, um, but you already chains. have a creation value, right? So that creation value is utilized for the network, isn't it? The creation value is only for the the, the initial storage. That five cents that they charge, and it's it's five. It's, it's nowhere near that uh, that cost here. So if I go to Crypto Create, let me see if they have, yeah they updated it. So if I were to create an account. It's five cents. However, 
you saw, uh, I showed you some wallets that does it for you. So you're not even paying that five cent technically. They're doing it for you. They're uh, uh, assuming, and assuming that cost. So most people won't even have to go to that five cents. It's when they do enable the services for crypto account auto renew that they'll charge this very ridiculous amount. And the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm against this amount that's being so low, uh, and we haven't talked about this on this podcast, <laughs> proxy staking. Eventually, they'll roll out proxy staking, and proxy staking will pay you H bars on a daily basis. And how much you want to bet that those H bars that they pay you on a daily balance, uh, daily um, uh, at the end of the day, that they will easily cover that fee that comes up once every ninety days. So it's it's not a it, uh, that's the thing is I I was looking for a fee that's a little bit higher up. Uh, so that it would help with the accounts where, uh, let's say, the owner of the account passed away. That happens. You could cross the street, get hit by someone, and no one had the private private keys to your wallet. That account is just going like, to collect dust. It's never going to go back into circulation. So you need a fee to to drain that account, but they that's not their approach. They don't want to charge for this they just want to charge for the cost so they're not being greedy which is which is i'm not happy because th those h bars are getting locked out it's good for the uh, h bar value because it's uh, accounts that are not accessible uh, unfortunately that when someone passes away and they don't share their private keys crap happens um but if if you let's say for example you had a um, hundred dollars right on your h bar account a hundred dollars and something happens to you and yeah, hundred dollars. Actually, that that wouldn't even make uh, the calculation wouldn't even make sense. But um, let me use a hundred dollars here. Uh, and we said uh, divided by yeah, point zero 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 two zero zero two. Yeah, okay. So, all right, I'm gonna divide by this and divide by transistor. By. Sure. Okay. So if you had hundred dollars in your H bar account, it would take. 123,000 years for the account to expire. Wow. So as you can see, the fees is is, is too low. And, and when I say 123,000 dollars, uh, 123,000 years, that is under the assumption that the value of the H bar doesn't go up with time. And obviously, it's going to go up. So that that's a bare minimum. It, it, it makes no sense. Uh, someone that died and hundred dollars locked away for 123,000 years, it, it doesn't make any sense. But they didn't do this to make sense. They did it because they they need to validate the cost, and that's it. If they were really greedy, they would grab every penny of a, of a person that passed away. But uh, as you can see from the calculation here, that they, they don't. The, the, the interesting thing that you said there is that these H bars do have the ability to be uh, put back into circulation. That's something Event that I have not eventually. Heard. I have not yeah. heard with other blockchain uh, yeah. technology out there. Once you lose uh, you lose those private keys, or you pass away, or uh, or there's a hack and, and whatever, you know your ledger breaks or whatever, whatever happens, and you you can't ha access those, and pff, it's tough luck. You're just gonna have yeah. to sit there and look at your, uh, your, your, your funds just stuck in, uh, in the blockchain. They're, yeah, they're going. They're they're just gonna be locked away. I mean, there that's an incentive in some ways because that does provide value to the network uh, if uh, someone buys the tokens and they're never sold. That's that's just a reality. It's it, it's similar to um, uh, token burn. When you're you're burning uh, tokens out of the network, you're increasing the value of the ones that are left. When you're buying tokens and they're forgotten forever, that increase the network uh, value. But that's that's not why they're doing it. They're doing it because that's how much it costs to renew it every 90 days, and they haven't started that cost yet. Um, I don't think anyone would notice if it was turned on right now. I mean, come on, uh, one fiftieth of a cent. One it's, penny it's, in twelve years. That's that's yeah. I would I would not notice it. And a way for you to calculate this uh, right now is if you go to uh, no, this is the Adara fee. Let's uh, go back to the Adara webpage. Huh. I like numbers, by the way. <laughs> uh, K 
can you uh wait wait let me bring that up can no, you I see cannot. no well a little bit yeah yeah i can i can make out what it is but it's not clear okay okay now you can there you go yeah. magic magic um so let's assume that and not every account has a balance people sometimes create an account for just to see how easy it is and some may just create an account as a as a placeholder it's like they, they can use like multiple accounts in case one gets compromised they have another account who knows um, so there's account numbers created from the beginning but let's assume they all have H bar in there and the fee was uh, 1 15th, uh, 150th of a cent so I'll bring the calculator on this screen so you can see it um, maybe I should close some calculators here there we go <laughs> Uh, yep. Bring the calculator here. Okay. So, 203, 863, multiplied by 0. 0.0002. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So, they're right now uh, charging, if they had the feature enabled, for all these accounts and if uh, all these accounts at a balance, they're only charging $40 every 90 days to keep those act, uh, account active. $40 for 200,000 accounts. <laughs> every 90 days. Interesting. For, for, yeah, uh, every 90 days. That's a, not daily. That's yeah, 40 days for 200. How much does it... Uh... And these are, Sorry, these are companies like... Um, what was that bank that they, they did, that Hedera just, just uh, partnered with? These are multi uh, Shin, Shinzen Bank, was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The so top. this is like one of those, like they're literally paying Shin, point zero. Shinhan Bank, there. Yeah, yeah Shinhan Bank, yeah. All these companies right yeah. here, look at that. They are literally paying point zero zero two every 90 days to utilize the Hedera network. You know they are profiting off of using, using uh, Hedera. Oh, no, these companies are, are, are not getting... It, they're not losing money, but they're not doing they're not doing it there right now for for profits. They're they're not generating any profits compared to their current business models with whatever technologies they're running. This is all in the effort of a promising future. They're in it for what the future would be able to do. And and let's keep in mind a company even as big as Google uh, can only serve. Uh, we didn't even talk about this. Uh, can only serve two terms of three years. After that, they're out of there. Right. So, but but it, it, it gives it gives. I guess what I'm saying is that um, they have the advantage, or is it an equal equal advantage amongst the public and 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 the private investors here um, to see the technology being utilized and created on Hedera. Yeah, so, so right now where, where they're sitting, they have a position to help the network grow. They're actually, uh, think of it as a, a committee of experts in, in their fields. Each of them has something to contribute to this project. There are exactly equal owners. Not, none of them owns more of a share of the network. The decision uh, is not made by uh, one person being voted as part of the cuckoo, I mean, like, like a CEO of a company, it doesn't work that way. It's equal voting. And if the vote makes sense and they all agree, then it takes effect. Now, uh, people would say and argue, well, they could be bad actors, right? They, they could pass along a decision that benefits them. Unfortunately, they would also be stabbing their foot when they do that because when they are no longer uh, part of the governing council, and they still want to use the network, and most of them have plans for the network, uh, they won't be able to gain the advantages that they, let's say they favored themselves in some way. So it's, it, it doesn't help them to do something malicious because eventually they'll be on the other side experiencing the same effect that the user are receiving. And six years is nothing for a company. Um, let's see, uh, um, Dirch Telecom and Boeing, how, how long have they been... Uh, on the market, Boeing has been what 50, 80 years. Mm -hmm. Company, I, I I don't know how long. So six years on, on on how long Boeing has been on the market is nothing. It's a glimpse. It, it, it's it's meaningless. So they're doing this because they believe in where this is going. Nice. And uh, there's twenty here. There's from what I understand, there's always going to be only twenty uh, um, uh, governed bodies. 39. 
39. So they started uh, making announcements a year and a half ago. It was five members announced. And not every now and then they add an extra member. And their end goal is to have 39 members. But let, let's be careful here. We don't want 39 members. Hopefully you see the globe here. We, um, we, no, we don't, don't want 39. You do? No, no. After you scrolled up, it just... Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here. Okay, got it. Uh, you don't want to see a globe where they're all located at the same spot. Because if a government wakes up one day and says, listen up, um, I'm sorry, but you can't operate a node here. Then they could literally shut down a part of the network. And you don't want uh, you don't want one third of the network being shut down. That that usually doesn't go well for your public ledger. Uh, so you have one down here. Uh, let's see who's down here. That's uh, Magalu in Singapore. Uh, you have another one here. That's uh, Numero. Uh, the financial business. Magalu is a retailer, if I remember correctly. Uh, you have one here. That's uh, WePro. They're big, by the way, in India. Uh, here you have Zane. Uh, here you have UCL, because that's a university, London, DLA Piper, Dutch Telecom. Uh, if people don't know who Dutch Telecom is, they, they should probably look them up. They're pretty huge. Uh, looks like Google is operating their nodes uh, outside of the U.S. Because the, if they would have been in the U.S. with their node, it would have been too centralized, right? You, you don't want to have uh, your nodes all in one location. And that's the thing about companies that are... That are International. I noticed they, there's, they some, can op there's some color coordination here. What's that represent? Oh, that, that doesn't represent anything. It's just an animation. Trust me, the network <laughs> the network moves transaction way faster than this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it, it's just showing I'm a simulation of how the nodes would communicate with each other. But you, what you're seeing right now, you would have to multiply that by 10 times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in, in speed. And you have to keep in mind that every time you see a line moving like this, uh, they're not move, they're not gossiping one transaction. They're probably gossiping hundreds of transactions in that swing. I, I thought um, I, I just because the color, color coordination sort of reminds me of, of traffic traffic lights because you have the green, yellow, and red, and I'm thinking red, it's slowing down or stop. You know, so I'm like maybe this node is a bad node, slowing down. It's not able to process stuff or, you know. But if you're saying that the color coordination has nothing to do with, with, with the, uh, uh, I guess the activity of, of the node itself, then okay. Right. No. This this is not a re representation of what is actually happening. If you want to know what's happening right now at this very minute, um, let me see if I can remember that site. Um, if I can't, I can take a look at the uh, use cases uh, because I remember it's on that site too. So there is a place similar to Etherscan. There is a place that uh, shows you activities. So I'll, I'll show you what the version of uh, Adara's Etherscan looks like. Uh, we haven't well, seen that, that either. Isn't Did... that Glassnode? I mean, sorry. No, no, uh, it's, um, it, it's, it, it's not Dragon Glass. Dragon no. Glass, yeah. yeah. Um, let me see. It was, did I put user? Yeah, okay. I'm looking for it. Give me a moment. I know the name, it's just... Uh, that's the thing. I have a, a, a big issue remembering names. I, I know exactly what I want to say, but I, I'm always searching that name. Uh, no, that's not it. That's not safe. If it's blurry, I apologize. I'll, I'll make it clear once uh, once I find it. Okay. Uh, Dragon glass, ash hash, no. Uh, Kabuto. There we go. Kabuto. Okay. Kabuto. Uh, Kabuto. I can't. I can't type now. Hey, there. Let's see if that worked. Yeah, okay. So their website is kabuto.sh. I know it's a weird uh, uh, weird website, but uh, kabuto.sh. See the Explorer in action. And this is their version of uh, Etherscan. So all transactions are coming up here. Uh, see if there's a way. Yeah, I click View Transaction. And you can see all the transaction that's happening right now. And this is refreshing, I think, uh, well, pretty fast. Um, 
six seconds, eight, what happened, eight seconds. I, it's changing too fast for me to start uh, reading when it's on the screen. So I would have to pick one that just happened. Um, see, everything on the screen here, which is, I'd say about 50 uh, I, items. I, I am jaw dropped. I'm literally like looking at this like, what? Yeah, th Look this is happening this right is now. So, this is crazy. Yeah, I, I, I feel like this is a mirror, mirror node, by the way. Um, they're referred as mirror node because they get the information from the network. Um, there are sends the information to all the mirror nodes. Dragon class is one. Ashhash.info is one. Um, I, I think Ashhash.info is one. Um, but they're getting that information pushed, and they're saying these transactions took place. Now, let's see. Um, so this one at the top is rotating between six to eight seconds, okay? And the one at the bottom here is rotating between... Uh, looks like it's rotating between eight to ten seconds. So, oh no, sorry, eight to eleven. So let's assume six to eleven. So all transaction we see here is in a five-second span. So this screen is refreshing, Jeez. entire screen every five seconds. Yeah, you can see here every time they're blinking yellow here. These are brand new transaction that just popped up from <laughs> from the top of the page. That's crazy. And you can click any of them when they pop up. And I'll click okay. this one. And, and it tells you from which account to which account, what was the transfer for. If this was a token, it, it'll break it down for you. In this case, the type was consensus submit message. So there's a good chance the message was encrypted because you can uh, use their network and encrypt the message if you don't want anybody else to read it. Uh, most people think a public ledger is not safe to use because it's public. But you can encrypt the message. Um, so there is, there's always that option. Uh, in this case, it says consensus su submit message. They submitted a message. Um, uh, this is their memo. Uh, they decide to put that number in the memo for you and me. This this means nothing. It, it, it absolutely means nothing. It could be uh, it could be an exchange that's sent. Uh, that is receiving coins from someone else. Uh, but there's no way to know because, like I was saying, it's public, but it's also private. You, you don't know who's using it, but you can monitor the transaction. So it gives you a, kind of the best of both worlds, I guess you could you could say. Um, if you knew if it was your account, then you, you'd know like, oh, okay, this is my transaction. Yes, I can verify it. Uh, this is a transaction hash. That's perfect. You can actually search that hash. Let me see if it works if I copy and paste on this screen. Um, I think there's a way. Let's go to mainnet, Kabuto. Let's see search yeah yeah there we go so I, I i copied the transaction hash and i was able to refund that transaction uh under mirror node i should be able to take that transaction hash to go to any mirror nodes that is keeping a history and then uh look up the transaction and if um if let's say there's an issue with a transaction and, and i'm going to court you can actually take the transaction and prove that this was a a legal transaction it, 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 there are uh can offer you that kind of guarantee that you can take the, the the confirmation, the signatures, show it to court, and the court would say yes. We we have to agree that this was a legal transaction. Nice. Hi, Max. We're reaching about the two hour mark. That is <laughs> so much information. I'm sure you can keep going and going and going. I know you like talking about Hedera. I spent many hours with you already off off hair talking about Hedera. And I'm sure I'm going to ta uh, talk to you many more times on the podcast to get some fresh updates because there's always new stuff coming out. But uh, with that said, uh, for the new listeners and viewers that want to get plugged into Hedera and, and just get started, how can they do that? Uh, just uh, go ahead. That's, uh, that's actually funny. Right here, if you're on Andaras.com website. Do you magic real quick? Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. I call me Harry Potter. Give me a second. All right. So if you go on Andaras website, it uh, doesn't matter where on the website. Um, it literally says at the top, get started. Now, this is from a, a mostly a developer point of view. It says for developers, um, I guess for everyone, you can always take a look at that. But that's where you would start. Me personally, this is based on Dara's suggestion. That's where you would go. Me personally, I prefer their YouTube channel. So something you would like to do, uh, if you ever curious about Dara, and I strongly recommend this, um, 
you would find their channel. Don't watch Corn Bureau. He's a, he's a father of Bonadary. He absolutely despises the project. Uh, let me see if I can. Let, let me put the filters here and I put channels. Uh, yeah, okay. So we want the. Yeah, they have 273 videos, by the way. Uh, all of this is mostly informative videos. Uh, if you're bored one day, if you want to go through those videos, feel free. But I would recommend, for the most part, uh, the yeah, the community town halls. Is, is it still coming out on your side? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, community town halls. So community town halls here. Um, I wouldn't click necessary play hall, but if you subscribe to their newsletter, which uh, I, I can show you how you can subscribe you can start asking questions that you have. And if they haven't covered those questions during their town hall, and which by the way, they're about an hour long, uh, they'll answer those questions live. These are the uh, the two top guys, Mance and Lehman. And they answer community questions. It could be about anything. You, you can ask the guy, what's his favorite food? I, I actually saw someone uh, asking that, that same questions. So anything, that you think may ask if they don't answer it, it's because it's been covered in previous town hall. They won't they won't repeat answers to questions. So obviously you would start from the beginning if you want to know what they've discussed. Uh, they're going back to, all the way to April of uh, actually I have it in reverse. Oh, they're not in the right order. Interesting. Uh, let's see, March. April twentieth. So they go back all the way to April twentieth. So you can see how the network evolve what kind of questions people were asking at the time they try to keep it under one hour and they do this once a month um, so if you want to be notified when they get these what you want to do is you go to there you the, the home page you scroll to the bottom let's hope it's not fuzzy uh, it's good yeah oh, you, you got fuzzy <laughs> yeah yeah and i know it's not my internet connection i've, I've stream on twitch and i never had issues um okay so you go completely at the bottom and if i remember here yeah right there it, it's very subtle here sign up for the newsletter Perfect. so you you would enter your email address and you just click sign up you'll get notified whenever there's uh changes to the network when they do a town hall meeting um they'll let you know about it too and then they tell you how you can submit your questions for the next town hall meeting. I would say this would, should be your starting point if you're trying to learn technology and those uh, videos about town hall meetings. And then after that, that, I see there's yeah. some other links there to uh, other social media platforms as well to get plugged in. Right. So Telegram, uh, if you're a big fan of Telegram, I would recommend. I, I don't use Telegram. I, I I have something against Telegram. Nothing about the. Uh, that thing about Adara, uh, but the Telegram, if you want to talk about Adara and you have questions, there's actually people's uh, always on on this one. Um, it's Telegram HBAR chat. So just have to join their Telegram. Uh, right now, they have 417 people online uh, and they have 5,857 members uh, in, in their Telegram. I, I, so they subscribe to them um, and they are very, very active. I love it because there's so much information in there. It's it's <laughs> they hype, 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 hype. I love it. I wish there was a... Actually, you know what? For, for a moment there, they actually did ban me because I shared my video on uh, uh, the, the interview with Christian Hasker. But after I messaged, yeah. after I messaged them because they thought that I was spamming the, the, the channel, they uh, they were able, they were able to un unban me or, or, or unmute me, I guess, or whatever the word is. And I was able to communicate with everybody in there and just continuously ask questions. And that's what it comes down to is obviously asking questions. And, and it, I love it. Well, that's one one of the best Hedera channels out there to uh, talk to an active community at all times. Uh, uh, of course, and if you want to uh, speculate on pricing, because uh, there's some people that wants to do that, uh, I believe that's H bar price. Let me see here. Um, yeah, H bar price. So you 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 have to go through this uh, person. I, I can't remember the exact one, um, but they do include H bar chat as well uh, for pricing. You'd send a message to the person if you want to speculate. I believe H Bar Price has a, his own Discord, um, but the Discord uh, very important here because they'll they'll ban you in an instant here if you uh, if you cross that line. If you go to Adara's uh, website again and you try to, it's going to be fuzzy again. I apologize. Um, 
down there, let's see, uh, HBAR contacts, um, looking where that was. Oh, yeah, the social uh, logos here. So they have Discord. Keep in mind the Discord here is only for developers. So I wouldn't recommend going there and talking about uh, when's the next time um, HBAR when is going to pop. A win moon. <laughs> When moon, because I'll show you something. Can you can you do your magic uh, real quick? Uh, oh, uh, can you see? Can you see it? I'm, no. I'm doing Discord in Discord. No, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't see be, it. Be, uh, let's see fuzzy, here. Fuzzy, screen. Fuzzy, 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 fuzzy. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So I'm doing Discord in Discord. It's going to be a little bit tunnel vision in one of these, and I, it doesn't let me move it. Um, as you can see, I'm one of the elite in the community. Uh, it's just because I'm active that they gave me that title. I never asked for it. <laughs> oh, by the way, um, okay, this is where I'm gonna plug you in for sure, because I am. Yeah. I'm also I'm also part of this community, uh, and I'm always uh, I'm always checking things out. Man, Max, okay, you are one of those guys. There's a there's a, only a handful of people. When I'm talking about a handful of people, I only got five digits. I don't know how many digits you have on your hand, but there's only a handful of people that are actively answering questions uh, from people that are just curious about uh, Hedera or, com or community members that are, are actively us using Hedera. You're in there, man. You are the man. Always in there, man. So I, yeah. I give you a big props, a pat on the back for doing an awesome job. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yes, very active in the Discord community, but because they gave me the elite and I asked permission to delete uh, stuff that was spamming, they, unfortunately, some people try to... Uh, um, advertise scam like any discord any telegram so when i see those i, I delete them now i have to have power um, if someone goes in there and has genuine questions i will try to answer it like uh, john mentioned but if, if it's uh, spammy uh, because it is at the, the developer discord then yeah I'd, I'd probably end up deleting the comments so if it's this uh, general genuine question or if it's um, developer related then i will let it happen and try to help if I can. I'm not a developer, so I'll try my best. And this is the number of comments I left on the Discord of Adara since I've joined it. 4,634 comments since I joined that Discord. How many did I leave? Can you put my name on there? Sure, I can take a look. Uh, I, I'm definitely one of the more active uh, person in that so one. Uh, blockchain. Cross comparison. 33. <laughs> There's the interview right and, there. JT right there. JT CEO of Join. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see for Greg. Greg. Uh, Greg Scholar is very Barry. active as well. He's a very yeah yeah person. yeah. Let's see. I never compared mine to him. See, this is a guy. Geez. This is a guy from Adara. He's always on, and I'm I'm only about fifteen percent away from his comment. It's not a competition. It, it just <laughs> happens this way. You can do uh, it. <laughs> yeah yeah. I, I'm going to take someone else that's. Um, is also part of Swirl. He also writes a lot, uh, Cody. Um, and he only has 260, 36 posts. He doesn't wow. type it up, and you see him always on. So from from Adara side, the I guess the second most active person that's not Adara is me, and then the one above that is like Greg. Um, yeah, I'm, I should probably spend more time elsewhere, but I'm, I'm always on. <laughs> that's awesome, man. All right, Max, let's go ahead and wrap this up. We are over, well over the two-hour mark. You gave us so much information on, on a Hedera update, which I, that's what I was expecting. That's why I, I reached out to you. I'm like, hey, man, we need we need some fresh uh, Hedera content. And I knew you're the, you the guy to talk about that because we've we've done this several times off air and you've always, you've always outshined yourself. So once again, thank you, thank you, thank you for being on the podcast. And I will be bringing you back very soon. Uh, with that said, Cryptonauts, thank you for listening, watching, and make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and check us out in Discord, uh, C3 Media, as well as Hedera, obviously, uh, and make sure you uh, say hello to Max out there. With that said, Max, thank you, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Stacks, hats, and huddle. Adios.